All right, so we're so happy to have everybody for part two of our celebration. I wanted to pause, though, just to give a few remarks about all the people to thank and what really transpired to really transform our retail spaces. You know, despite the fact that COVID really impacted all of us significantly, it did allow us to take advantage of the dark time we had in facility. And so we're so grateful, again, for the leadership of our board to support this initiative, but also for our partners at Airmark who really made this significant investment and then found our wonderful partners and imagined this space so we could have an iconic you know, restaurant or institution like Ben's Chili Bowl here. And so we're grateful today. I also want to thank our staff, led by our Chief Operating Officer Samuel Thomas, to help, again, lead our operations as well. And so it's my pleasure again to reintroduce our incredible Mayor, Mira Basel. Well, good morning again, everybody. It's great to be at the Walter Washington Convention Center in downtown DC. And for everyone familiar with this building, you may be experiencing what I'm experiencing. I turned to Greg and I said, what was here before? Uh, because it's like it's totally reclaimed space uh, in the convention center. And what better way uh, to reclaim that space uh, than to invite an iconic D.C. business of uh, D.C. business since 1958 on historic U Street and now in the Washington uh, Convention Center. Uh, I will in a second have the opportunity uh, to invite the patriarch of that family the matriarch of that family and co-founder of Ben's Chili Bowl uh, to, the to the podium. I want to emphasize how excited we are uh, that so much of our town is open, people going to work, kids going to camp, kids soon to be going to school, people attending our monuments and museums and parks, uh, pools, uh, enjoying the summer. Uh, we are celebrating today that we are also able to open our sixth made in, shop made in D.C. Uh, right in the convention uh, center as well. And this week, uh, Events D.C. will be inviting uh, a big convention uh, to our town. Uh, so it brings me pleasure now to continue uh, to recognize uh, this wonderful addition to our convention center, which is going to really make convention goers very happy uh, to come out of their meeting and to be able to go um, right to Bench Chili Bowl. So now I think it's my honor to invite um, Brent Harden, followed by Vida Ali, uh, and then we'll take a group photo. Ben. Ben, uh, unfortunately, couldn't be here and got stuck mayor, um, but we can go straight to the incredible Ali family, if that's okay. Ms. Ali, thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. We're so wonderful and, and, and blessed to be here today, uh, the whole family here. Uh, just a huge debt of gratitude uh, to go out to so many. We're very proud of this location. It's a beautiful location. Uh, and we're just so thankful. Uh, the first time we saw it, Mom, how were you feeling the first time oh, you saw it? Oh, I think this is absolutely beautiful. You know, when Ben and I opened the Chili Bowl 63 years ago, had no idea that we would do anything more than open a business and raise a family. And here we are now in this beautiful facility, bringing our, our conventioners to Washington, D.C., and having them experience Ben's Chili Bowl is a dream come true for me. So I want to thank our wonderful mayor and her team for making this possible and thank our beautiful community that supported us for 63 years. We think you'll really enjoy our chili house smokes as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to, um, as mom said, uh, Mayor Bowser, has been, you've been such a supporter of Ben's. Uh, of small business. We thank you so much. Uh, we could not be here without you uh, and all that you do for our city and for our restaurants. Thank you so much. Uh, John Falciccio, you, the same to you. Thank you very much for all that you do. Uh, I've known Greg O'Dell for, for many, many years uh, in my role as uh, past chair of Destination DC. Uh, you and the Events DC team uh, just do a tremendous job uh, in this building and the convention center and all that you do, uh, as well as Samuel Thomas and Chin Hubbard and the entire Events DC team. We thank you all. Uh, Louis uh, Supolveda and the entire Aramark team, thank you all so very much. You've put your heart and soul into this location, into building this. 
Uh, so for that, we thank you. And to Socrates and Ramon Kala, who will be operating this restaurant, um, we thank you all so much for the brotherhood and the family and the friendships. Um, at last, thank the DMV community, all of Washington, D.C., and all of our supporters over the years and the decades uh, that we've had the pleasure to serve for so long. Uh, thank you all for all of your love and support. So D.C. is open. The yeah. D.C. Convention Center is open. Yeah. Shop Made in D.C. is open. Yeah. And Ben's Chili Bowl is open here at Washington, D.C.'s Convention right. Center. Thank you all so very much. Okay. Now we will cut the ribbon. You want to take a question? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. As we get settled, we're happy to take some questions. And I, by the way, I'm going to personal privilege. I told Mark that I don't get any hard questions today because my mother is here from Wilmington, North Carolina, visiting. So we do this out. That that was a joke, Mark. You can ask me a hard questions too. Please, questions first. Yes, yeah, so I'll say with you, congratulations, Mr. Adele, for all you've done for our city. Your mother must be very proud. Of you. <laughs> can, can you tell us about the safety protocols that conventioners will encounter? Sure. I know when we were here at the, the peak, sure. there were machines you had to walk through. They would scan us for our temperature. Yes. You had devices in the, in the ceilings that would show people's temperature if they were hot, they yep. would be removed from the building. Are those going to be back operational, and, and what protocols will people find when 15,000 people gather here? I appreciate the question. I appreciate you answering half of the question for me. Um, no, we, uh, Mark is right. We've spent a lot of time, and I really give a lot of credit to um, our operations team, again, led by Samuel Thomas. We have a number of protocols in place, um, including uh, all of the uh, technology, even AI technology, that will monitor uh, even the distancing. Uh, the MASH requirements as well in the building, but also all the features for sanitation for services as well, and then even for our HVAC and ventilation as well. And so we are going to have, and, and we're thankful that the mayor actually um, has mandated MASH. I will tell you our customers actually take a lot of comfort in that. The, the customers that we have coming to the building for the next two shows ask, actually would have been masked up anyway. And so we're proud of that fact. And I think, you know, what's interesting is that in Washington, D.C., People want to come here, but I also want to feel safe. And I think it's been uh, a blessing that we've been seen as very responsible, thanks to the leadership of our mayor. So hopefully I answer your question, Mark. Not, not fully. Sorry, Bob. OK. No, no, uh, please. But so will there be temperature checks? Will we, there be any requirement for vaccination cards for any of these events? So good question. So we will have temperature checks. Um, even though it may not be required, we're actually going to have them uh, at our entries as well for the building. For vaccinations, we actually will not require vaccination cars, but we will require everyone to be masked up anyway. Um, but we would have said if you weren't vaccinated, you would have to wear a mask anyway, but all of our staff are going to do so. So now I hope I've answered your question. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Oh. So, Mayor Bowser, yep. you're asking people to come to the city at a time when, around the country, innocent people on the street. You're requiring masks for everybody indoors. You're, you're asking people to come from out of town so they could be coming from cities that have a much lower vaccination rate and a higher uh, case rate than Washington, D.C. does. Is that really the right thing to do? What do you tell people who, who question, is this really the right time to come to Washington, D.C.? 
uh, considering all of the, the Well, Mark, issues. what we know, actually, yes, it's always a good time uh, to talk about our city, to talk about the destination, and to talk about everything that people can enjoy here. That's for Washingtonians, people from Maryland and Virginia, and people from all over our country. We know that Americans are traveling, uh, and many of them are trying to decide where they're going to go. Many people want to go someplace that they can drive. Uh, and we have been talking to uh, audiences about coming uh, to D.C. Yes, Sam. So, Mayor, um, we're hearing that the, in New York, the mayor is going to require proof of vaccination for indoor dining, for gyms. Uh, and uh, proof of vaccination, et cetera. Is that in the cards for, for D.C.? Say again. It was the last the part of which... D.C.? It says the mayor of Yeah, New I York. heard the first part. So your question, um, and I, I read the article you may be referring to now, Sam, um, that New York City is proposing or planning to do some kind of pass for New York City. And I'm going to read all about it see what they're going to do. I think that we are entering a different and new phase of this pandemic, a phase, um, unfortunately, that we hope to avoid by more people getting vaccinated earlier so the virus didn't mutate. And everybody uh, in cities and towns in the nation um, wants to follow the best public health evidence as it relates to that, um, and we certainly will too. But the new phase that we're entering is the virus is going to be around. There are going to be uh, infections. And the message continues to be that vaccine saves lives. So the, I can assure you that the district is going to evaluate anything that works for D.C. Uh, and as this thing evolves, and one thing I know of 16, 17 months of dealing with this, it evolves. The public health guidance changes. And we will evolve too. Oh. Sure. Yeah. Go. Sam, go ahead. I have a question about the uh, the police. The yep. council today is expected to vote on your uh, proposal to, uh, I guess, increase the number of police officers. I think it, the number is eleven million dollars. But we're hearing from the chairman that perhaps they're going to use half of that for violence interrupters and half of that for police officers. Your reaction? I think it's um, a lot of things you can compromise on, okay? And I was on a council, so I know about compromise when you get down to the council. Public safety is not one of them. So what my job is, is to tell D.C. residents, to tell the council of the District of Columbia what we need based on the advice of the practitioners, okay? The police chief says we need many, many more officers, or 170 of them. We can hire in the next year. We probably actually need more, but what we know we can hire next year is an additional 170 on top of what I requested already, which is 135. That's what we need. If the council wants to experiment more, with violence interruption, they, obviously they can do that. They have a $17 billion budget. Go find it someplace else in that budget. But $11 million, 170 plus 135, I'm telling the people of the District of Columbia, that's what we need. Anything else? Yes. Mayor Bowser, follow up to that question, uh, and then a separate one after that. So your administration is accusing the council of slashing the proposal for 170 new officers. Um, I'm not, listen, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. All right, hold on. Be, let, let me, I don't like loaded language. Let's, let's deal with the facts. I made a proposal based on what the police chief says he needs. The council has issued a statement saying that it's less than half of that that they're willing to do. That's not an accusation. That's a fact. Okay, but the, the question I have to you is, if not having enough officers has been an issue MPD has been dealing with since 2014, 2015, Say again. Lanier, Come not again. having enough officers has been an issue that the police department has been dealing with under Chief Lanier going back 2014, 2015. Chief Newsham was uh, hitting that same drumbeat. Now we have Chief Conti. Your budget proposal for fiscal year 2022 um, was not fully uh, supporting the police department, accounting for vacancy savings, and now you're making a last-minute change after recent crime made national headlines. 
How is this issue not also on you? Oh, let me, let me be clear, because apparently you're not familiar with how we have worked for the last six years at building the police department to 4,000 officers. And I would suggest to anybody who has a question about my commitment to having enough police officers on the force to do some research. We have been on a march since 2015 to get our department up to 4,000, to get over a historic retirement bubble. And we were on track to do that until last year when the police budget was cut by $15 million where we couldn't do any hiring in a single year. What I proposed to the council this spring was an additional 135 new officers and additional 100 cadets. What the chief said, the new chief I might add, went back to the drawing board to make sure that we couldn't get anything else out of our pipeline to hire up more in 22. That's what he was able to do, and that's what I'm putting in front of the council. Now, as for something being last minute, the budget process continues, and it will continue until August 3rd. So there's nothing last minute about it. And when I make a proposal, I see to it that it gets funded. And the proposal that we have before the council is to fund $11 million by putting off some important infrastructure projects, but ones that I will fund with the new infrastructure bill that President Biden is advancing through the Congress. Yes? A follow question on another topic. We're, we've been reporting on the examiner video that shows you inside a wedding without a mask, not actively eating or drinking. We see you in front of a microphone with a mask on now, which you don't have to do. Um, but my question I'll to you Listen, is first, I'll take my mask off. What, let, 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 me, let me clear something up. Because if you want to report on the right wing wing nuts, be, have at it. But I'm not going to give it a lot of energy. We all know what the rule says about sitting at a di di dining table and dining. Don't be ridiculous. What's the next question? What's your question? with Dave Chappelle, the photo that was shared on that, and the photo from back in November when you were in Delaware cele celebrating Biden's win, that those images have the potential to undermine messaging during the pandemic, to be safe, to mask up. Can I ask you, do, what is your understanding for the critics who are upset with what they're seeing out of your administration, who are frustrated with what's What I know out? is we have a lot of COVID deniers out there. Um, who are largely responsible for the country not being able to recover from COVID because for many months they have been telling their followers not to get vaccinated, who have spent two or three days spreading disinformation. So let, let me talk to you about the points that you raised. I officiated a lovely wedding on a rooftop. The right wingers, you know what they said? I officiated a, a, a wedding indoors already alive from the top. They took a picture of me at a table where dinner and drinks were served. Okay. Did they show you the whole time I was there? No. Did they show you when I had on a mask? No. Because they have a, a little thing that they're trying to do. They're trying after many months of telling people not to get vaccinated to also now say that they shouldn't be masked or that very falsely that we're not having weddings, parties, and events in D.C. D.C. is open. We're encouraging everybody to get vaccinated, have weddings, parties, and events, and as another layer, to wear your mask. It's that simple. There were also people seen indoors without a mask on. They should have had their mask on. Let me, let me say you, something else, Stephanie. There, I'm sorry? Did you... That while I saw that people that report? didn't have on masks while they were at dinner, dinner tables. Yes, I did. And let me, let me just also say something. A mask mandate is not about gotchas. If, you, if that's what you think it is, you're wrong. And what Events DC is doing and what organizers are going to do and what DC residents are going to do is remind people what the rules are. That's what they're going to do. They're going to remind people what the rules are. And what DC residents have demonstrated to me is that they'll follow the rules. Yes. I'm sorry. You had a chance. I didn't get everybody over here. I'll come back this way, and then I'll come back this way. Yes. Uh, 
Mayor Bowser, yes. uh, two quick questions on infrastructure. What are you looking for in terms of the, D, uh, uh, the infrastructure bill that's going through the Congress and approved by the Biden administration? What are you looking for for DC-1? And number two, the bridge over uh, in the, the Minnesota Avenue area that collapsed. I understand that to repair that will cost $25 million. Is that true? I think it is true, um, and it's in that range, and we've also included uh, it in our capital budget. So I think that the, um, what it's going to take to replace that bridge is accounted for in our current budget. And as far as what we're looking for in the infrastructure bill, um, there's probably a lot more. I, I like the way President Biden was going and considering both hard infrastructure and uh, in the people that it takes that make up the infrastructure of our lives. So uh, I am uh, grateful to see some movement um, from the Senate, and we hope that that proceeds. The split, one of the biggest things is how much will be for roads, how much will be for transit. Transit is a key part of the economic engine of this region, um, so that's going to be uh, always important for us to, to make sure that that's on track, so to speak. Yes. Any other questions? Yes, Julie. And I just wanted to follow up yes. on what you were saying about the police budget earlier. Yep. What are your options here? Will you sign this budget as it comes to you, no matter how much money is in it for police? What else can you do? I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see what else happens with the budget. But it is a, it's a big concern of mine. If um, I think it would be a tremendous... Um, it's going to be a problem for us. What we're telling it, right now we're running our, our police on a lot of overtime, and if we're not careful, we're going to break the department. Um, and so we need what we need. We need to hire officers as soon as we can. And we need the council to understand that. Again, we're not, uh, we understand compromise, and I understand the need to get seven votes. Uh, but all of the council members need to be held accountable for uh, making sure that every agency, I, I would say this about another agency too, but every agency needs what it needs, and this is what we need. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is on or off topic, but I wanted to ask the, ben, the, the Ali family. Yes. Um, you all have survived um, a riot, Metro, and COVID. I wanna know how you have been able to maintain the business you know, over the years, and also, are you all ready to announce something new for Ben's Chili Bowl? This is exciting, but what's new for Ben's Chili Bowl? Hi, thank you so much for the question. Um, you know, it's funny because for all of the things that you talked about that we survived, and it has been quite a bit, and the first and foremost, we must give credit to my mom right here, Virginia Alley, and my dad, Ben Alley. So. Thank you guys so much because they're the ones who provided that spirit, that encouragement, that work ethic that the whole family has, you know, grown and learned from. But beyond that, we survived because of one really simple thing, and that is the DMV community. You know, that is the support we've had from Mayor Bowser, from, from everyone here, and the fact that, you know, I think about this a lot because I went to school at Brown University in Rhode Island. I went to Berkeley College of Music in Boston. I lived in Los Angeles for 25 years. And when I moved back here after my dad passed away, to see the difference in DC, to remember that energy that I grew up with and to see people like Mayor Bowser and her team trying to continue and maintain the wonderful culture of DC that goes deeper than what we see on television. You know, that's that's what DC is. DC is really a community and a family. Ben's Chili Bowl has always stood to be the heart and soul of DC, if you will. You know, we've always welcomed everyone from all walks of life, you know, young, old, rich, poor, all races, all backgrounds, everything here as family. As far as announcements, uh, we are entering into a new phase right now, and this is actually a very exciting moment for us because this convention center is a gateway to Washington, D.C. 
this convention center is something that people come from all over the world. Many people come here for a convention and leave and don't see anything aside from the convention center. So to have this here allows us to kind of share something with the world. And what I want to do now is we're going to develop a franchising system. We want to expand and bring the love, the family support around the country and perhaps around the world. And what's so special about this is I'm trying to instill in everyone who wants to open a new Ben's Chili Bowl that it's not just about business, it's not just about going somewhere and expanding, it's about bringing value to the community. It's about the values that we as a DC community and as a DC family have always stood for. We want that to kind of spread out, so we want to take a little piece of the heart and soul of DC and spread that around the country. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, Mayor Bowser, just two off-topic questions. One, have you been briefed, did you have any update on the active shooter at the Pentagon Metro Station, and is that in any way impacting any stance that MPD or Metro in D.C. is taking? I only got a, a, a quick note before I came in, Mark, so I don't have an update. And then can I ask you about, we're seeing more and more people getting tested around the country because of the increase in the variant. What can you tell us about the numbers? Are you, are, is the district seeing an increase in testing uh, and do you have any plans to increase the availability of reopening any more testing sites, uh, make testing more available going forward? Um, we still have quite a lot of city supported testing uh, available at our firehouses. And we know a lot of private places uh, continue to ch test uh, on demand. And I'll ask DC Health to give you an update on any increases in testing. Any, anything else? All right, let's have some Ben's Chili Bowl. There are seats here, um, if you grab one. So, so thank you all for the questions and being here today. So we actually have uh, some treats for everyone to enjoy, which is why we're here. But we want to do so responsibly as we normally do at operations. So we're going to have some at the counters that you can pick up. We have seating. We ask, and frankly, we're ur urging, or if not requiring, that you sit down. Please be seated when you eat. Thank you very much. Thank you all for being here today.